I'd actually seen him on our way home from school. He looked dirty and disturbed, and stared straight at us as our bus went by. We even made jokes about him, probably as our way of pretending we weren't afraid. He was incredibly out of place in our middle-class suburb. So his mere presence felt threatening, thus our panic when the three of us got off our stop and saw him at the corner. He was between us and our houses, and the bus had already pulled away, so we bolted for the bushes of a nearby yard. We weren't sure if he had seen us, but we peered through the leaves and saw him stalking our way. Muttering randomly, Tim, my neighbor, insisted that he'd seen a large knife in the man's ragged clothing. Danny, a kid I hardly knew, who had just moved into the neighborhood, insisted that he was imagining it. That Tim's glasses must have reflected off the sun or something. Still, we were terrified, and the sidewalk was going to bring him right by us. It was Tim that broke and ran first. Keeping low, I followed him, my heart pounding, as we dove into the darkness, underneath the porch, the unfamiliar house we'd been hiding near. As we squeezed our bodies against the dirt, the grimy wood pressed on our backs, barely giving us enough room to breathe. We could see the disturbed man turn into the yard in front of us and begin searching around, hitting the bushes and muttering angrily. I realized then that Danny wasn't with us, but I hadn't seen anywhere where he'd gone. Tim had lost his glasses back at the bushes, and he just huddled in the shadows next to me in blind terror. We stayed there in silence, waiting every so often. Whenever I almost thought it was safe to come out, footsteps would creep across the wooden porch above us. Tim almost sneezed once, but it covered his mouth. I realized then that Danny wasn't with us. We waited there so long that the tone of the sunlight began to change. We hadn't heard of the man searching about in a while, and I was getting ready to peek out, when footsteps clattered and the thud hit the wood directly above us. A split second later, Danny's face appeared in front of us upside down, and he looked at us through the lattice. A look of shock and surprise crossed his features at finally finding us. He whispered something, but I couldn't hear anything. He seemed to be saying, come closer. So I figured the horrible man was still around, and we had to be quiet, and I inched forward. Danny's features grew fearful, and he kept indicating something above us. Strangely, I still couldn't hear him. His eyes seemed dim, then I inched forward a little bit more. I froze in a moment of horror, then backed up. Tim mouthed to me. What did he say? And I just shook my head, completely in shock. Danny hadn't conveyed. Come closer. He had in mind. He's up there. The drifter was unknowingly sitting right above us, waiting, because he knew we had to be somewhere in that yard. There was nothing but silence, trying not to scream. I was glad Tim had lost his glasses. I lay there as darkness descended, waiting for an unwavering terror and trying not to feel the glassy stare of Danny's severed head as it rested in the grass, a foot away. <laughs>